Uh, it's hard to see out there. So good morning, everyone. My name is Monica McEwen. Um, I'm with uh, ThoughtSpot and happy to be here today. Um, happy to introduce our two panelists. Um, we have with us Terry Hickey from CIBC and Greg Carter from Global Trans. So um, we're uh, going to keep this interactive this morning. We're going to keep this interactive this morning. So we will ask for audience questions towards the end. So if you think of anything along the way based on anything that these gentlemen say that you'd like to drill deeper into, um, just kind of keep that in your head and we'll make sure to answer it at the end of the panel today. Gentlemen, please have a seat. So I thought we could just start um, by you sharing a little bit about your, your roles within each of your organizations. Um, titles are one thing, but the, uh, the roles are quite different. So um, sort of what that, what that means, Greg as um, CTO and Terry as Chief Analytics Officer, um, what those roles mean within your organization, um, and then a little bit about your organization for those that might, might not know. So, Greg? Great. So I'm the Chief Technology Officer and, and also the Head of Marketing for Global Trans. Global Trans moves stuff. We're a shipping company that moves about 10,000 trucks a day. We're soon to expand into uh, ocean and air freight. And my background is in writing software for uh, third-party logistics providers. So uh, I'm, I'm, not a, uh, I'm not a logistics person. I'm a software person in delivering enterprise software. And uh, at Global Trans, it's been a great nexus of uh, process automation, uh, uh, people augmentation, enabling people to make smart decisions, or helping make them for them. And that's where we intersect with ThoughtSpot, is that we use ThoughtSpot to help people make better decisions, or we help make decisions based on the past experience. And so, the whole idea of being able to see what the hot searches are uh, enables our, our team of about 2,000 uh, agents and brokers and uh, logistics professionals. It, it enables them to be able to make better, smarter, faster decisions. So that's how we came up here. Great. And can you share a little bit about um, sort of how you have evolved with your sort of BI strategy or analytics um, within the organization and sort of how you came to ThoughtSpot, perhaps what you were using previously and, um, you know, how ThoughtSpot has sort of changed the way you're delivering those analytics out to your users? Sure. So I, I've been in this market where the interface of humans, of people and automation and technology for a long time. And one of the the goals we've often had is to be able to take the guesswork out of things. And we've worked with technologies, yeah, I'm not going to mention them, but we've worked with technologies that promise some sort of natural language processing or the ability to do ad hoc, uh, very powerful, powerful searches and very powerful analytics on the fly. And they've always really sucked, to be really honest. And when when someone's come in to do a demo, I've become very jaded over the years. When someone's come in to do a demo, I've said, well, let's add another column or another attribute to a given entity to that search. And they look at me like, you moron, you know I can't do it on the fly. I need to rebuild a bunch of stuff. And I, then I would kind of check out. And when the uh, ThoughtSpot people, when, when the team came in, and I was able to, to challenge them with truly adaptive queries and adaptive information, just like all of us would normally act like people, mm -hmm. like in a conversation in the middle of a management meeting, saying, well, yeah, but what if we also factored in this? They were able to incorporate that in the query on the fly without some massive restructuring of a table or a cube or a triangle or whatever, and actually show the result. And so, that's when we really became uh, extremely interested in not just looking at analytics as a tertiary component. So if you think about people, process, process and automation, and then analytics, we decided that we're going to go all in and in invest and inject analytics everywhere. So no matter where you are in our process-based applications and, and our products, you can jump into or maybe you don't even know you're using ThoughtSpot. And I, I think my colleague Darwish gave a, a discussion about embedding analytics. The, the idea that you can, from 
even a very simple action, jump in and do extremely uh, natural interrogation and, and questioning of what you're about to do is very powerful. So that was very long-winded. So. Great. No, that's really helpful. So we'll jump into some of those um, use cases. But before we do, um, Terry, maybe you can share a little bit about what you're doing at CIBC. And Terry's from Toronto, so he brought the snow. So you can blame him for that beautiful white wonderland outside. Um, but share a little bit about your role within the organization and, and what you folks are doing. Sure, for sure. So for those of you who don't know who CIBC is, it's actually the 40th largest bank in the world. It's one of the top five in Canada. And I actually just recently joined them about five and a half months ago. Uh, I, have, I have spent a career at IBM. And before I left, I was leading artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and advanced analytics for IBM globally in the global services division. So I spent 176 days last year somewhere else than my house uh, in the world, talking to organizations around the world, whether it was China, Japan, Australia. I mean, you name it, I was probably there over the last uh, 18 to 24 months. And it gave me a good perspective about what approaches organizations were taking in the world today around analytics. And when this particular opportunity came along, I wasn't looking to change, but uh, CIBC meant that I didn't have to travel. It was an opportunity, truthfully, for me to stop telling organizations or suggesting to organizations what they should be doing from an analytics perspective and actually put the things that I was telling my clients to test. I was really gonna be held accountable to say, look, go do these five things, and now I was actually gonna to have to go and do those five things and make sure that the ROI is going to occur and the right things were gonna happen and all the savings were gonna uh, occur as well. So it was a good opportunity for me to be able to prove the kinds of things that I've been telling clients for the last 20 years from, from an IBM perspective that uh, you know th these things can come true. So, since I've been at CIBC, we've really spent a lot of time trying to align our organization around analytics. So we have, our company is about 44, 45,000 people, and we have 1,300 people that do analytics. They either have analytics in their title or they actually do perform analytics. So there's a lot of people inside of our, inside of our organization that have some sort of role in insights within our organization. And when you've got 1,300, pe 1300 people, it's very hard to get them aligned on what you're doing and how you're going about doing it. So we've spent a ton of time with the organization trying to just get them aligned. So we spend a lot of time on things like analytics days, which is where we get uh, a bunch of people in a room just like this and we talk about the things that we're doing and how we're doing it. It's kind of like our own internal conference is just for analytics so that they understand what other parts of their organization are doing and how they might be able to benefit from that or that we can just make the introduction that they can, you know, two different groups can go and talk to each other, that they can take that algorithm or they can take that learning and they can apply it somewhere else in the business. We spend a lot of time uh, talking about what Tom was just talking about related to artificial intelligence. One of the things that I found in my previous role that was that a lot of organizations talk about artificial intelligence. A lot of organizations do a lot of proof of concepts, but they never have, they haven't been able to crack the code of how do we get those things into a production environment. So it's just POC after POC after POC. So we spend a, t a, a lot of time trying to crack crack that and say, what does AI mean to us? How are, we going to, how are we going to implement it within our organization? And I actually have the opportunity to present it to our board uh, next Thursday so that they will understand what our strategy is as it relates to this as well. And we can talk, about, uh, talk, about a little, talk a little bit about that a little later as well. But I would say that the, the biggest thing that we're trying to accomplish inside of our organization is really to democratize data. And I know, I know everyone talks about this. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of split it into two camps. We're trying to democratize data uh, for one camp being for our data scientists and for another camp being for our end users. So for our, uh, our data scientists, we've created this new thing called Milo. And think of Milo as Google for data inside of your organization or our organization. Imagine the ability of a person, a data scientist, to be able to go into Milo and, and, and ask for 
all of the assets that we have related to client experience. And Milo will come back and say, well, here's the algorithms that we've got, here's the dashboards that we've got, here's the people that we know have worked on these kinds of things in the past, here's the actual code that someone's written in Python or R or SAS or something like that. And it's a one-stop shop that allows 1,300 people to literally have access to all of the other things that everyone else has been creating inside of our organization. And you would think that in a large organization, we would have this cracked. We would know exactly how to do this. I would say that for the most part, I think all large organizations have the same kind of problem that we do. We've got silos of, of organizations that have built these things. They don't talk to each other. They don't, they don't share their information. And this is our one way of breaking down those barriers and, and allowing our data scientists to be able to, to excel at what they do. The other part of that that we're plugging in to Milo is ThoughtSpot. And that's the, that's the data dem democratization for our end users. And what our users will be eventually able to do is that well, they will still go to Milo, but Milo will actually, when they type in that question about what they're looking for, instead of it creating, you know, showing them the code or showing them uh, something else, it'll actually show them the, the result right inside the ThoughtSpot uh, application. They won't know that they're interacting with ThoughtSpot per se, they'll, they'll know it as Milo but this will be the tool that they use as well. So it's gonna be a single place where people will go, regardless of the role that you've got, to be able to find the data assets within our organization. And, and truthfully, we believe that this will fundamentally change the way that our, that our organization, I think, and in, in every organization, would work with something like this tool. That's great, and I, I wanna um, kind of dive a little bit deeper on that for a minute before we jump into some of the use cases. So there's been a lot of discussion this week around culture and how to, as you're introducing new tools to um, the organization, that the, the hardest part is sort of bringing the horse to water and how you um, modify the culture to introduce the new tools that are gonna help improve productivity. It sounds like you're spending a lot of time focused on that between Milo, which is sort of bringing this, everything together to a central repository, for lack of a better term, or central portal for folks, and also these analytics summits that you discuss. So um, I know in my discussions with some of the customers here in the audience, they're saying, you know, we're really trying to figure out how we do a better job of bridging the various organizations that are using a variety of tools. There was one gentleman yesterday that said, you know, we've got 26 BI tools and ThoughtSpot's our 27th, right? So how do you um, help the organization understand what's the right solution for the right use case? Um, so I'd be curious if you could share a little bit about any kind of tangible evidence you've seen of these analytic summits or some of the other things that you're doing in terms of helping the organization understand what your data strategy is, yep. because I know you spent a lot of time creating the data strategy and now trying to implement it. It's a great question, and, and, and as I said, we spend um, almost all of our time right now on alignment in the organization about what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, we, have, we have one small or massive advantage, I guess, in, in that we've rationalized all of our tools down to probably five. So we've, my team decides these are the five different tools that we're going to use, whether you know it's Tableau or SAS or ThoughtSpot, Python, R, et cetera. So we're, just, we're the group that decides what every tool everyone's going to use. But just because you've decided on the tool doesn't mean that people are going to use it to your point. So in our analytics days, what we do is it, 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 start, you know, it typically starts at eight, it goes till two or three in the afternoon. We've got a break for lunch, we've got networking and mentoring so that people feel that it's not just an educational, it's actually a whole, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a fair, if you will, where people are getting a lot out of it. And, and the feedback has been fantastic. But what we actually also do is we invent, we invite, sorry, our partners. So we have had, uh, you know, all of those different partners that I mentioned from our, from our tools perspective, we actually give them an hour or two in our, in our conference to come up on stage, talk about their product, what they're doing, we have someone inside of our organization talk about how they're leveraging that tool inside of the organization. We give them a booth at the back of the room so that during lunch or breaks, people can go and talk to them about that particular tool and how you know, other clients are using it outside in the marketplace. So they get a feel, like it's almost like there's a theme for the day around that particular tool that people, um, 
that people will learn more about and they can ask the ask the experts. So we've got, we'll have another table at the back where my team is, where they can go and ask them questions about how do you do this or how would you learn about this, that kind of stuff. And now we're, we're moving, our next one uh, that we've got is next uh, Tuesday. And it's literally limited to just executives. So inside of our organization of 44,000, we have roughly 400-ish uh, uh, boarded executives, and we're inviting just them into a meeting. So, you know, I wouldn't say this necessarily to them, but this is kind of like analytics for dummies, <laughs> where we're having them come in, where we're explaining to them in simple terms, when we talk about these kinds of things, when we say Python, you know, it's not a snake, it's this is what it's, these are the <laughs> kinds of things that it can, uh, that it is doing inside of our organization. So they don't feel, they don't fear analytics anymore, so, and we'll be talking to them about what their teams are going to be doing with ThoughtSpot, where, where, what our direction is as it relates to artificial intelligence. So that's next week, and then our next uh, analytics day for our uh, wider organization is actually December the 11th, I believe, and it's, it's, it, it's, it, instead of it being focused on tools, it's actually focused on women. So the theme of our next one is women in data science. So we're trying to encourage the people inside of our organization to, to have careers in this particular domain, how we can move them throughout the organization. Um, how, we're bringing in experts from inside of our organization and outside of the organization to become, to talk about their careers. How did they get to where they were? And then create mentoring relationships so that we can make sure that we've got the next generation of uh, women leaders inside of our organization in this domain. That's fantastic, and there's been a, a fair amount of discussion this week as well in diversity in uh, analytics and in technology in general, so fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. Greg, anything you want to add there from a cultural perspective in terms of what you've seen at Global Trans with... Um... Yeah, I think at Global Trans, <clears throat> we've been more focused on making analytics such an interconnected part of just... We, we try to pretend it doesn't exist. We try to bury it and build it in, in every step, in every process, in every function, so that you may not realize you're using ThoughtSpot. Mm -hmm. You may be a, a driver with a, a, a load on your truck, and you may want to know what the pickup and drop-off times are for the next um, sequence. You're in, you know, you're on, I almost said Blackberry, I'm dating myself. You all, you're on your phone and you type in pick up and drop, up, drop off time next, stop. And they don't care they're using ThoughtSpot. They don't care they're using BI. They just literally just want to know the pick up and drop off time of their next stop. Do they want to know if there's a restaurant or a place to park? And, and those all sound trivial, right? But to a driver with a load of high value goods who's got to go through security and actually find the exact dock and the exact positioning of where they're gonna uh, unload those goods, that's critical. Yeah. And they, again, don't care at all that they're using ThoughtSpot. They just care that they're typing in half asleep, which is actually sad for a truck driver, but they're <laughs> typing in a, a random query and they wanna get a distinct result. Yeah. And they want um, behind the scenes for us as a software provider and, and ThoughtSpot as our partner, to not only say what's the published time, but what are the actual times? When, when has there been a deviant, uh, you know, a, a derivation from when the gates open? When has there been a time when the gates open early? They, they wanna know all that. And we don't want them to have to think about that. And so our, our education is, our education of our user community is Type it. That's fantastic. It, it, type it as you say it. Type it as you think it. It won't always work, but as with, with ThoughtSpot and, and other technologies and how we build our data marts and how we present the information to search technologies that do natural language processing, we want people to be able to ask the questions they would ask as if they had someone next to them. Yeah, so that's, that's great, and um, you shared at the beginning, you know, you're in the business of, of moving things, right? And um, Tom Davenport shared the importance of um, analytics and UPS's route optimization. So um, maybe you could share with us a couple of ways in which your organization is using ThoughtSpot um, to help improve the way that you're operating your organization. Sure, so 
One of the things in the transportation industry, and you, if you, I, I, it's so funny, in, within a particular industry, you think, assume everyone reads the same stories you do. And you realize once you tell an anecdote like I'm about to tell, they, they don't. Um, but th there's a driver shortage. And predictably, people don't want to drive trucks. And the idea that you have effectively, for a while, in the 70s to the 90s, you had almost unlimited capacity. You could get a truck that would carry what you wanted it to carry from where you wanted it to pick it up to where you wanted to drop it off. And it was almost guaranteed. And now, I don't drive. I, I bet I've driven less than 100 miles this year. And I'm not alone, and more and more people aren't driving, more and more people then aren't driving trucks. So capacity is an extremely valuable commodity in what we do. And so one of our goals is to, when we book a shipment from Tulsa to Tallahassee, we also want to book Tallahassee to Jacksonville, Jacksonville to Atlanta, Atlanta to Shreveport, Shreveport to Newark. That'd be a great load, actually. Um, but the, the whole idea is that we want to keep that driver in our network. We want them to be shipping goods that we are booking. And ThoughtSpot lets us do, and, and is an integral part of our goal for 2019 of five loads in advance. So when a given uh, carrier or shipper or broker says, I want to move something from uh, Tulsa to Tallahassee, up pops a screen that says, given the driver behavior, given shipper behavior, given the carrier behavior as a company, these are the places they like to go. Does the driver like to go out and back? Does the driver like to go point to point? Are they European? Do they, they want to just roam? Will they go anywhere? Do they like long haul, short haul? Um, so we're using ThoughtSpot to help us build the algorithms and actually execute the queries that when someone books a load, they get five other loads popping up. And a few may be potentials, and a few may be solid, but the fact that they have the opportunity means, in theory, we could capture that driver and their truck, their tractor, and their trailer for five more loads. They love it. The driver loves it because they know exactly what they're going to do for a change. Um, and they know that we are looking out for their best interest. If they like to do out and backs, so we're basically using ThoughtSpot to help us implement the algorithms that will understand the human behavior. And this gets to the AI point. The driver may not realize they like certain patterns, but we do, and we will, and we'll book it. And so that, that use case is beyond the fact that we embed ThoughtSpot in pretty much everything we do, but that use case is massively impactful on not just global trans, but in, in how the, um, the whole world of uh, transportation is evolving. Yeah, I would imagine there's um, obviously incredible improved efficiencies from doing that. Have you guys been able to sort of identify what the tangible ROI will be from that, that route optimization and the five, five load planning? If, if we can get that far, if we can actually get three loads in advance, we could probably add 12 to 15 percent to our gross profit. Wow, that's it's incredible. It's a huge, that's it's a huge impact. And probably keep your customers happier as well. Customers are happy because if you can get a dedicated route, which in our industry is a, a massive opportunity, if you can basically, if you're running from Tulsa to Tallahassee and you have to send a truck back empty, but you can identify someone in Oklahoma City or St. Louis, actually, I'm doing my math right. St. Louis, you can uh, send a truck back full, and the broker may just pay the gas price. Oh. So the load's free, not to the shipper, but the load's free in the market, and it's a huge, and it means that the driver's driving back, his costs are paid for, they're very happy, and the shipper is over the moon because you're giving them a below market rate. Sounds like a win all around. Yeah. Great. 
Um, so thanks for sharing that use case. That's, that's really helpful. Um, Terry, maybe you could share a little bit about, you talked about Milo and sort of how you're um, intending to incorporate ThoughtSpot into your broader analytics strategy, but any specific use cases in terms of how you're leveraging the technology today? Yeah, so the, the one, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very simple, simple use case. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, I've only been here five, five and a half months, but when I first started, when I'm you know, me interviewing and meeting with the CEO and, and the CEO, would be, he'd, be, he'd ask me a question. So what, what's, you know, what's, how many clients do we have or how many, how many this do we have in this particular region? And usually, uh, you know, before, before I came, before we had these kinds of tools, that would be something that would go into an intake that someone would have to go and get a team together that would yeah. go and have to put they have to you know and it would you know I, I i don't i don't want it to sound like it's exaggerating but it could easily take seven days yeah. ten days uh and he asked me a question you know probably a month into to being at the organization and and i went back to my team and within two hours we were able to get back to him and say, here's the answer to the question that you were looking for. And without the, a tool like this, it would have been, it, I won't say impossible, but because we had it implemented and we had you know, the, that particular data set curated, so when we typed in client, it knew what we meant by client. And when we said Ontario region, it knew what that meant inside of our data set. So luckily we had curated that, th those kinds of uh, data elements already. Uh, but that was extremely impressive. There was another person that came to me inside the organization and said, Terry, we, we, are, we know we've got all the data in the world about our clients, but we're, we're lost in the sea and we can't make heads or tails or we, we can't figure out which way is north. And he, he basically said, can you tell me who our, our top clients are in these 15 different domains? And, and he's like, I've been here for five years and no one's been able to ever get this information to me. I said, you know what, give me, give me a couple of days, I'll get back to you. I went back to the team. By the end of the day, they had given, there was a report in my in-basket that basically had you know, the, top, the top 10 mortgage holders, the top 10 credit card holders, the top 10, uh, all these different metrics that they had given us. I had shipped it off to him and he said, I can't believe, he says, I knew we had the data, I just didn't know it was going to be this easy for us to be able to get. And without a word of a lie, within two days, he had booked his team with me and they brought a list of questions that they said, can you now answer these questions? So if you were able to answer that one in one day, here's the list of the next 50 that we've got. So we've actually started to create a process where I said, look, we're, we're in analytics, and yes, we work in banking, but we don't actually know what kind of questions the wealth team wants to answer. We don't know necessarily what the retail team wants to answer. I said, we're really good at understanding the data, and you're really good at understanding what you need to know to be able to make that next sales call or be able to, 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 to figure out who needs what products and what solutions. I said, when we marry our two teams together and we can get you the answer to your question in seconds or, or minutes, I said, that, that's game changing for us. It means that you know, as that rep is going out to make a, a sales call or as a client is calling us, they can pull up information that they wouldn't have been able to do before because it would have meant that they would have had to have thought about that question a week or two weeks or three weeks in advance of that person coming in. And now, truthfully, they can think about that question today, you know, a day or two ahead of time, but in the future, in real time, as that client's coming in to be able to pull back that information. And the advantage, the advantage is that, and you know, I'm not, everyone in the room already knows this, but it's, it's when you show this to people, when you sit down with other executives and you show them in real time and you say, okay, so what's your question? Well, I want to know how many clients we have in, in, in the Ontario region that are over 55. And you, you, know, you start to type in the, the, the query, so to speak, or the, or the text, and you're not typing SQL code, and you're not joining, and you're not doing all these complex kinds of things. They, they're just mesmerized by the, by the simplicity of this. And our eventual goal is to be able to get those users on the platform as well. So it's, we're kind of, I don't know if this is a uh, fundamentally different approach than what most organizations are taking. Having come from a, you know, an AI services background, in my experience, people with new technologies, you know, and chatbots is the example I typically, traditionally give, 
if I, if I give someone a chatbot and they interact with it, by the third time, if it hasn't answered that question effectively or they weren't happy, they'll refuse to use that technology again. Oh, that's garbage, it never works, I'm never gonna use that again, and they'll go back to the old way. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent that. So what we're doing is we'll have people ask the questions, they'll send it over to my team, and my team will run the queries for them. And if the data sets aren't curated, they'll go in the background, they'll curate the information so that next time we, when we get a question like that, we'll, we'll know it. And, that, and, and we'll do that training, if you will, over a, a you know, three to six month period. And then at, at the end of six months, we're actually gonna say, okay, now we feel that we've trained the models uh, well enough in these particular domains. So it's gotta be in retail or it's gotta be in wealth because we're so big and so complex, I can't open the system up and, and expect that when a wealth person asks a question that it's not gonna, that the system's not gonna misunderstand and give them a retail question, a retail answer, if you will. So we're trying to prevent that by training uh, these data sets in a, in a very um, structured way so that we almost ensure success in an organization like ours, that's key. To your point before, you know, how are you making sure that these tools are gonna to get adopted? Right. This is one of these things that we're doing based on the, the, organi the type of organization that we've got and the type of users that we've got, we feel that this is the best approach forward. Yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting approach and it sounds like you made a, a best friend that day, that, the guy that was looking for five years for the answer right. and in a couple hours you responded to it and he brought his whole team to you. Um, so as part of that process, are you showing the users the new interface that they'll be using, or are you kind of keeping that back right now until the models are trained appropriately and then you'll do a more formal sort of rollout of the technology? Yeah, I, I like to think of it, uh, I, so today I like to use, I like to think of it as the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Um, you, you don't look behind the curtain kind of thing. Uh, for certain people, we do show it to them when we're trying to impress them with what's coming yeah. and we show the future of what analytics is going to look like inside of our organization. But I, I, I don't want them focused on the tool. I want them focused on their question. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's really the magic. The, I mean, obviously this is magic and, 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 and magical, but the hardest part of this whole transaction is actually asking the right questions. And I want them spending their time focused on that today. Mm -hmm. And we'll figure out what that query has to look like in, inside of ThoughtSpot. We do, as I said, we do show them we, in our analytics days, we do get up on stage and we've shown them what the future is. I've, I've, I've presented to our senior le leadership team and said, look, my goal is that you will be able to run your own queries. I've talked to it, I've showed them that what it looks like, but I haven't really unleashed them yeah. to be able to go and interact with it today. Yeah, okay, well, we'll look forward to when you do unleash the Wizard of Oz, that's great. Greg, you, it sounded like uh, you're nodding over there. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, just, there, there were two things that Terry brought up. That, uh, the, I don't want to unleash the tool. I just want people to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And I want the thing that answers the question to know who's asking it and to understand the context of where, they're, where they are in the organization, what the other queries they've been asking. If someone from HR asks a question about revenue yield per rep, I want them to know they're asking it from an HR perspective, probably going towards you know, their comp or something like that, which is different than a sales leader who's leading a sales team, mm -hmm. wanting to know, well, how do they rebalance the, the territory allocation of reps. So I, I, I want the sales team, I want the sales leader to be able to answer or, or HR person to ask that question and have the search understand what, what's their perspective mm -hmm. unless they specifically cue off of it. But I think the other thing too is that the, the thing I like about where ThoughtSpot is headed is that the curation, which I totally under, I mean I totally get, I want that to go away. Right. I think it's a pain in the ass. I mean, curating data sets and curating hints for queries is, is exactly what we have to do right now. But I want it to go away. Yeah. I want it to be cued off the context of the data <clears throat> and the context of the person asking. And I want the data to be a canonical thing that's universal. Um, which actually sounds like total BS because even now that I say it out loud, it's gonna be really hard to do, even within an industry. Yeah. It's gonna be hard to do. But I, 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 why not, why, why shouldn't that be a, a strive? 
Um, and I think the types of natural language processing with AI and machine learning, the model by doing things like looking at ThoughtSpot to analyze the queries people have been asking should be able to tune itself. Yep. And to your point about curating the data set and optimizing for particular types of questions or threads, if we can get auto curation, then we can get to where uh, queries are tuned automatically and then we can get to where people can ask really dumb questions. Like with absolutely no insight, with absolutely no knowledge of what is out there. Almost like I do with Google every day. And they ask the dumb question and they get actually a pretty good answer. Right. And the idea that you have to actually put a lot of thought behind that. If I ask some stupid question about Us Magazine, it, there's no thought that goes into curating that data set or that result. It's literally a dumb question with a dumb answer, but it's the answer I want. You know, I almost always find what I want. Yep. So if we can get that way with more meaningful, impactful questions that are done on the fly, to your point about the top 20 card holders or asset holders within your portfolio, I could ask it in a really dumb way, you know, a really silly way. Who's the best? And I, I, the thing will know, well, I'm the CFO, and I want to know the top 20 portfolio holders in my, or the top 20 asset holders in my portfolio, and that's what they'll give me. Yep. Yeah, and certainly that, that that's- And we're headed, headed in that direction. Yeah, exactly, yeah, I was gonna say. So if you, um, I'd be curious if you had to fast forward and you were sitting up here a year from now, um, where you think you'll be with your ThoughtSpot journey? Um, do you think you'll still sort of be in that, that data curation business or at that point it's more ingrained in sort of the day-to-day the -day of the users and the analysts? Either yeah, I mean, thoughts. I think we want it to be uh, ubiquitous and completely behind the scenes. Yep. We want people to go, you know, control F or command F and they have no idea they're in ThoughtSpot and they're typing some really sophisticated uh, truckload operations person who's trying to route trucks around a wildfire in, on I-75 in Florida, they can type in a really random but very specific, if that makes sense, query, and they want to look at all the alternate routes between Lakeland and Macon and see what the routes are. And we want all, or our, our, not necessarily just like a Google search, but what our performance history with drivers between, Make, or between Macon and, and Lakeland, Florida, are, and be able to do it in a very random, ad hoc, hurried, almost panicked way, and get the results. And, and have no idea at ThoughtSpot that behind the scenes used a auto-curated data set that had run through a machine learning algorithm to pre-optimize the routes, the, not only the routes, the drivers, everything, yep. between those two um, origins and destinations. Great, what about you, Terry? Yeah, I think ours is similar. Uh, I think that the way, the way that we will gauge success is a minimum of, of 10 different warehouses that are accessible, and, and I'm talking from the inside out, not from what our user perspective, but from my perspective that we've got uh, 10 warehouses that people will be able to go and query. They won't know what that they're talking to a particular warehouse. They're gonna ask a generic question right. uh, to your point earlier. Uh, it'll also be, so that's one, that's one measurement of success. Another measurement will actually be uh, user engagement. Mm -hmm. So how many queries, how many people, how many different people are asking different kinds of questions onto the platform? I don't know per se if I've got a, a goal in mind yet. We'll have to come up with something. So we've got, you know, we've got these things like uh, OKRs that we kind of set on a quarterly basis where at some point I'm going to have to declare this is what success means on this particular uh, on this particular endeavor. So we'll have to come up with what that number is. But I think between those two things, we've got enough data that enough people are on the platform and asking it questions that it becomes second nature. Right. And my goal, and in, in, in one of the reasons why I actually d decided to call the system that we're talking about Milo, my goal is to be able to say, when someone asks me a question, so how many clients do we have, or how many this, or how many that, my first answer is going to be, did you ask Milo? Right. 
to shame them into submission. You know, Correct. No, I totally yeah, agree. 100%. I, I totally agree. Did you did you bother and take the three seconds it, it's going to take to go and ask Milo that exact to find same you. question? Right. Right. Yeah. To, right. They, They're going to email me. You could have just gone into the system. And, that literally and the that same, same question, question they type in the email. Totally. They could have typed in Milo. Absolutely. And got the answer. Absolutely. You should send them back an email with a link to Milo. That's right. And, and with the Milo. answer, when you yeah. click it, it's going to. Or just have an auto, auto forward auto, to auto, Milo. Auto respond. Exactly. Yeah. And 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 I picked Milo because it's got a. You could be a male a male name, a female name. It 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 uh, it's got a persona that people can engage with. And, and, and you know it, it does sound for mountains of information logically organized, but but I don't tell people that inside the organization because I want to think of them, I want them to think of it as this thing or this person that they're dealing with. That when they ask this question, they go behind the curtain and they go and scurry and get the information and they present it back in the most uh, most appropriate format for them to be able to consume that information. Which is brilliant because if people, if your um, customer base. In internal customers as well, thinks they're literally talking to someone. Milo becomes you. That's right. Yeah. That's or right. It becomes everybody in the in the room, yeah. and you're not asking this mythical. Is thing, that Milo. job augmentation or elimination? <laughs> I think oh, aug don't get me there, brother. That's <laughs> augmentation, <laughs> optimi optimization, definitely. Um, we just have a few minutes left. Do we have any questions from the audience? Anything that anyone wants to dive a little bit deeper on? And I can't see very well out there, so. No? Not one question. Oh, we got one. All right. Hey, thank you for the uh, useful interaction. A little bit on the auto curation and the uh, and the pipeline before you get the curated data into ThoughtSpot. Uh, how has been your experience with that part? Um, do you do like chunks of data or data warehouses at a time? Uh, what kind of challenges did you have? Can you speak to that a little bit? Well, I don't think any of us are doing auto cur cur curation, uh, not, curation not, uh, at this point, but it's aspirational that as we use ThoughtSpot to understand the types of questions people are asking, that can drive machine learning algorithms that will curate data sets which will be optimized for natural language queries. So. Regardless of how sophisticated we're pretending and being, we're, we're at the beginning of the, the journey, in my opinion. And I, I've been in records management and document management for 20 plus years. And I, we're definitely in a new era of the ability to actually do natural language, process, natural language query, querying. Um, so I, I think we're, we're in the learning phase. I don't think anybody would truthfully admit or state that they're auto curating data sets, which as Terry said, there's effort that goes into it right now that's you know based on it's it's based on people and understanding of a particular discipline. But the uh, I think that if like everything else, we can capture that process and implement it as an algorithm. Uh, going forward, and I think that ThoughtSpot is kind of foundational for us. Uh, they can, ThoughtSpot gives us the information we need to actually do the auto curation, but we're at the beginning of that journey, in my opinion. No, I mean, the I was asking, in the absence of auto curation, how are you manually doing that? How, what are some of the challenges you faced in getting the data into ThoughtSpot? Querying so the, the queries? So the, the one, so, you mentioned before, so we're doing it warehouse by warehouse. You can't do 10 warehouses at one time, you gotta do it one by one. The, I would say the challenge that we're experiencing, um, it's not the importing of the data, it's actually how many different ways can someone say the same thing yeah. that we have to train it when they say client or customer or something, card holder, that all means the same thing and it's also context. Because in one user using one term could be could mean something totally different if it was another person using that same and term. how they use it and how they use it. So there's a that I would say that that's actually the complexity that we're going through right now, and that's why we're taking this approach where we're not allowing the end user not allowing is probably the wrong way to say it, but we're encouraging. Um, users to go through my team first so that we can do that curation so that when the, we, we do unleash them on the power of this of this of this system it'll it'll work right day one and they'll be so in love with it they're going to want to use it every day 
Great. Well, Greg and Terry, thank you very much. Um, thank you. We, thank uh, you. we appreciate you being customers and speaking here today and look forward to continuing on your thoughts about Journey with you. I hope when we're back next year, you've done the five root optimization and we've taken those queries from five days to two hours to two seconds. Perfect. So, um, thanks both thank for being here today. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.